This is the Free Computer Consultant. We're going to do a video today on hard drives and USB drives and the cloning of one drive to another. In this case, what I've got here is a USB enclosure that I've made uh, uh, just kind of out of a kit. It's got a 160 gigabyte hard drive, connections on the back. Just really isn't big enough for my purposes anymore. So what I've done is bought another hard drive to replace it. Uh, in this case, it's just a Hitachi Death Star 320 gigabyte drive. And the way I'm going to put all the information from the old drive onto the new drive is I'm going to install both of these drives into a working computer and I'm going to use one of my favorite programs out there today, a Cronus True Image software to clone the one drive onto the other and you will see that it automatically lets you uh, take care of size differentiation. You can, uh, you can do uh, the new partition the same size or, or make, in, in my case, just make the whole new drive one large partition. And we're going to do it quite easily. We will not even use uh, Windows operating system or anything else. We're just going to boot from the Cronus CD to do that job. And uh, so now I'm going to take the, uh, the old drive out of the enclosure and the new drive out of the bag, and I'm going to put them in uh, in a computer. Here's a shot of the drive in the enclosure. Uh, this probably uh, isn't my favorite design. It was a, an early uh, enclosure that um, and it did the job. It's not as easy to take apart as uh, as the newer ones, but uh, but it works. And uh, as you can see, it's uh, got an IDE cable, power cable, and uh, it's got a fan in there, a little bit of circuitry, not much to it. Uh, very easy to, to uh, put a kit together though. Here's a shot of these uh, two drives. Uh, since they are IDE, the only way I can put them into a machine on the same cable is one has to be configured as a, as a master device and one as a slave. With these uh, Hitachi, uh, formerly IBM drives, it's pretty easy to, uh, to read the code and figure out what you want. The top one here is the master. Uh, as you can see, maybe with the code here on the left, uh, the bottom one is the uh, is the slave. They've changed the uh, the code isn't quite as easy to read there, but uh, they still have it uh, have it right on the drive. Some drives it's not uh, not as evident. You kind of have to dig into some documentation. That must be done to uh, to get the IDE drives to function correctly with both of them on the same cable. Now here you see these drives uh, somewhat strategically placed. Uh, one of those things, don't do as I do, do as I say. But uh, we do have the drives uh, you know, separated here. Just got a, a piece of foam for them to sit on. I've uh, dis disconnected the, uh, the actual drive that normally runs the computer, so we don't need it. Just need the CD drive and these two uh, uh, new drives, uh, new to the machine that is, cabled together on the same IDE cable. And I'll say as a caveat, uh, you do not need to jumper them in this fashion for master and, uh, and slave if you are using what's called cable select, where the cable is actually wired in such a way that, that it tells the drive what to do. And there's a separate jumper setting for cable select on each drive. A lot of your Dell and Gateway and those kind of machines will come with uh, implementing cable select. I, I don't typically use it. Uh, usually we don't even have more than one drive in the machine. And uh, the, the new drives, the serial ATA, uh, that's, that's not, not even a factor anymore. But with the, uh, the older IDE drives, it is. Now with this particular PC, we don't have the uh, ever so convenient uh, F8 for uh, BBS pop-up on the boot. So I did have to go into the BIOS, tell it to uh, boot from the CD. As you can see, it is the Acronis uh, Rescue Media. And uh, it's giving us a choice. You can boot to uh, the uh, saved version, the full version, or, or Windows. Uh, in this case, uh, I am using the Acronis True Image Workstation, and uh, we're going to take the full version. Okay, here we are at the main menu. Doesn't quite boot this quickly, uh, but uh, it's fairly quick. We have the choice here. We can back up, do the recovery. A uh, variety of different things can be done, but we're going we're gonna to clone this disk. We use the wizard. One of the things I typically uh, do not use is the automatic mode. I use the manual. I want to be precise and know exactly what I'm getting, what I'm going to end up with. And there you can see disk 1. 
is uh, is the old 160 gig drive, and disk two is the new uh, 320. It doesn't show quite those numbers because of formatting. It's showing 153 and 298, but uh, and you can see primary master, primary slave. So if you have any uh, any doubts, if it's not as easy to determine which drive is which by size or by brand, uh, you can always go by master and slave. So here it's asking us to select the uh, the the old or source hard disk from the available list of drives, and I'm going to make sure disk one is highlighted. Click next. Destination is of course process elimination here, disk two, and we'll select that. Now here it's saying that uh, on the old drive, do we want to do something different, uh, destroy the data, wipe it out? No, I want to keep the data for now. I'll wipe it out later. When I know I've got a good copy and I know everything's uh, fine with the new drive, then I can get rid of it at any time. So we'll keep the data. And here you can select the moving method as proportional. And that means that if you used half the old drive as one partition and half the old drive as a second partition, it'll do the new drive the same way, 50-50 or 75-25, whatever, in proportion. Or you can use as is if you just want that 160 gig on the old drive, the 160 gig on the new drive, and have some free space over, you can do that. Or you can do manual. Proportional would work here because it's the full drive, but we'll just click into the manual, kind of see what's going on there. And here's the only part that might be just a tad bit confusing to someone that hasn't done it. If you want to change uh, something, you check the box for proceed relayout. And that will actually, even though, even though it is the way I want it, just to show you here what you can do, um, you can select a partition um, and you can change it. It's tell me how many unallocated uh, bytes before or after. You can grab hold of this uh, slider here and you can um, you, know, you can move it to once you start making some changes. Um, just kind of take the hand and, and move it back and forth. But, uh, but I do want the entire uh, space for the, uh, the new partition. Click Next. And here you have to uncheck Proceed Relayout or else you'll end up in a loop and just kind of go back and forth on that screen. But we're going to just, uh, here's the before cloning, here's after cloning, and that's what we want. So click Next. Now since we have booted from the recovery CD, this will not require you know a, a reboot or anything. It will do it all uh, in this one pass. Click Proceed to start, and it's going to kind of check things out, and it will start moving the data. Now you can kind of see um, here in the progress bar it says two hours remaining. Start out with five. Quickly change to three, then two. Uh, once it actually gets started, you can. Uh, you can kind of count the, on it being fairly accurate, saying an hour and 53 minutes, hour 46. You know, five minutes or so into the process, you'll have a pretty good idea how long it's going to take. And no, we're not going to sit here looking at the screen for the whole time. Now you can see the progress bar actually is starting to move a little bit. It's just uh, been a minute or so go by, and it's telling us an hour and 16 minutes remaining. And that's probably pretty close to what it'll turn out being. And now we have successful cloning completed. And hit OK. Exit. It'll reboot. And we are all done. We're all finished with the clone. We want to remember to take this jumper, put it back into the uh, primary or master position. I'll go ahead and reassemble that into the enclosure and uh, it'll be up and running. The old drive, 160 gigabyte, well that'll get recycled into a workstation that uh, doesn't need any drive larger than that. It'll be an upgrade for somebody else. That's it for right now. You can see the, uh, the ease of what was done and how a Cronus True Image workstation does a fantastic job with doing such a task.